you might know Apollo as the god of light or the sun. He was one of the most important gods in Greek mythology. However, Apollo also had a very dark and depressing side. Apollo killed, for example, three of his female lovers. The life of Apollo was not as glorious as it seems. He lost two of sons and defied the supreme god Zeus. And Apollo also murdered a pregnant woman. This baby-faced beautiful god Apollo was a big problem. In this video, we will explore the dark side of Apollo. The fact is that the god of light Apollo had such a dark side that even his dark side was dark as hell. Like many Greek mythology tales, the story of Apollo starts with Zeus getting someone pregnant. You might think that Zeus's wife Hera would have gotten used to that after so many times. But the queen of the gods was filled with anger and jealousy. However, she remembered what happened the last time she came after Zeus directly. Her loving husband shackled her and had her hung from Mount Olympus until she promised to never defy him again. Hera's solution was to punish the lady Zeus got pregnant. In this case, that pregnant lady was Leto. So Hera devised a plan. Conveniently, Hera and Zeus's daughter Eilithea was a goddess of childbirth, and Hera went up to her daughter and asked for her help. Eilithea did as commanded and ignored Leto's overdue birth. But Hera also had a backup plan, just in case her daughter failed the task. Hera also told Zeus's grandmother Gaia, the Earth personified, that Leto is not allowed to give birth anywhere on Earth. Hera made everyone scared, so Leto's was screwed. She was pregnant, overdue, wandering the land and fighting Hera's curses for nine nights and nine days until Zeus intervened. First, he just told his daughter, Eilithea, to stop what she was doing. Zeus told her brother about Hera's deal with Gaia and asked Poseidon to make an island float with a stream of water and storms so that it was technically not attached to the earth, it would be free of Hera's curse. So Poseidon made the island of Delos float, and now Leto could finally give birth to her children, Artemis and Apollo. From the moment he was born, Apollo was beloved by all the gods who all came to see the two newborns. Hephaestus gifted Apollo a magical bow, which immediately made Apollo groan and strong. Hera wasn't really happy, so she sent a monster instead. The snake dragon monster, Python was ordered to kill Apollo, Artemis, and their mother. With his new bow, Apollo chased Python down and slayed him. Apollo decided that this very island where he first spilled blood deserves a temple in his honor. So, Apollo built his own temple, and when it was done, he had no one to worship. Therefore, he kidnapped some random sailors by blowing their ship off course and then luring them onto the island in the form of a dolphin. On the island, they inevitably stumbled across the marvelous temple which Apollo had built. The island became known as Delphi, which over time became a famous place of worship. This was an area where an oracle tells prophecies to all visitors of Apollo's temple. This was the beginning of Apollo's grandeur. From here, it just spiraled out of control. Apollo named himself the god of archery, god prophecy, god of medicine, god light, god dancing, god poetry, god disease, and god truth. He basically became a god for everything. The muses singing about Apollo were singing all day long, worshiping him and pleasuring him. But just like his father, Apollo didn't just have a massive eagle. He also had a serious dark side, fueled by his extreme pride. For example, once Apollo had a musical contest against the Saturn's Marcius, who had the audacity to declare himself the greatest musician alive. So Apollo had to show the, the guy who was the real boss. The stakes for the contest were that the winner could do whatever he wanted to the loser. Apollo won the contest and decided that he wanted to flay the man alive. He enjoyed the screams of the men. But Apollo's darkness was also triggered whenever his love was refused. This was something that led him to kill three women and one man. Four innocent people were doomed the day Apollo fell in love with them. Apollo was bored by his muses. They worshipped him, but they constantly wanted him to play the lyres. So Apollo asked them, if I didn't play music, would you still love me? Apollo wanted someone to love him for him, and he decided that that someone was Daphne, a beautiful nymph who he fell in love with the moment he saw her. 
problem was, Daphne was a follower of Apollo's sister Artemis, and Artemis was one of the forever virgins of Greek mythology, and their followers were all about that life, meaning Daphne, then to Romans. Apollo wanted to do Daphne, so he chased her while she ran away, screaming in fear. In her screams, Daphne pled to her father, the river god Pinios, to save her. In response, Pinios transformed his daughter into a laurel tree. From then on, the laurels was Apollo's symbol, while Apollo was quickly busy finding another woman to love him. Victim number two was Cassandra. Cassandra was a princess of Troy and a priestess of Apollo. After the failure with Daphne, Apollo thought that making one of his priestesses fall in love with him should be easy and a better move. Since Cassandra is the hardest one, he picked her. Of course, Apollo knew it was common courtesy to show up with a gift when you force someone to love you. So he gave her the gift of prophecy superpowers. Cassandra took the gifts, but then rejected Apollo's love. Apollo cursed Cassandra, decreeing that no one shall ever believe a word she says ever again. Much later, this curse would be the doom of Troy. Cassandra knew that the Trojan horse was a trick, but no one believed her. And so Troy fell due to Apollo's curse. After all these girls all refused Apollo, he decided to go for a man to seduce. He shifted gears and fell in love with Lysintas, a beautiful man. For once, Apollo got his wish. Lysintas fell into love too, and they spent the time in bliss. It was everything Apollo wanted. True love, mutual love. Zephyrus, a god of wind, was also in love with Lysintas. One day, Apollo and Lysintas decided to play frisbee. They used a discus which was made of steel. Apollo threw the discus for him to catch, but the jealous Zephyrans couldn't bear their happiness, so he used his commando with winds to accelerate the discus to smash right into Lysintas' face. Apollo shifted gears again. His new love was a princess, Coronis. Apollo went after Coronis and they fell in love. Before long, she was even pregnant. All seemed well until Apollo saw Coronis sleep with another dude while she was pregnant with his child. Apollo was furious, so he called his sister Artemis to kill the pregnant Coronis. Apollo then burned the body. Apollo stayed true to his selfish ways and gave his child away to someone else to raise it. Apollo actually gave a son to Huron, who was partly raised by Apollo. It was Apollo who made Huron the great trainer of heroes, like Heracles and Achilles. So Apollo's son was now in the hands of Apollo's adopted son. Apollo, biological son, was given the name Asclepius, and Hurons raised him up to be the greatest mind of medicine the world had ever seen. So great at medicine that Asclepius even managed to bring a human back from the dead. Asclepius was killed for that by Zeus. Bringing people back from the dead went against the rules of the gods. To Apollo, the greatest god is Apollo. Apollo had the balls to exact his revenge against Zeus. He went after Zeus's beloved blacksmiths, the Cyclopses, who crafted Zeus' famous thunderbolts. Zeus loved these Cyclopses. He freed them from hell himself, and they were his trusted followers. So Apollo killed them all. Zeus was mad and punished Apollo by exiling him from Mount Olympus. But of course, Apollo would make his way back to Mount Olympus. He would recover, only to suffer some more in other ways. Apollo didn't actually spend all day just being worshipped and playing music. He also had a job. He had to drive the sun around the sky. In the world of the mortals, everybody knew Apollo, and they worshipped him as one of the most important gods. In fact, Apollo could be argued to be one of the most worshipped gods in ancient Greece and ancient Rome and like any other god with that many followers. Apollo had a bunch of with lovers with mortal women, and of his earthly children was Phaethon. He admired his father a lot and loved to brag about his godly father. Whenever he told his peers that his father was Apollo, the sun god, the great one, no one believed him. To them, Phaethon was just trying to be popular by lying about his father. They thought that his mother is just another woman that was knocked up and abandoned by some idiot. Phaethon was pissed and determined to prove his bullies wrong. He told them he would ride his father's chariot and they would see him in the sky driving the sun. So he went to his father and guilt tripped him. He cried about how Apollo abandoned him, left to this mom to raise him all alone. 
feeling guilty and trying to calm his son down. Apollo said that Phaethon could ask for anything, and Apollo promised that he would grant him one wish. And so, Phathlon asked to ride Apollo's chariot, drawn by four powerful stallions. Apollo knew that the young Phaethons took no chance at controlling these wild stallion. But as a god, he can't go back on his promise, especially not the proud Apollo. Apollo gave the boy a basic tutorial and told him that the horses ride this route every day. The boy didn't listen. Phaethon took off in that chariot all proud and wanted to get closer to earth. So he took the horses closer to earth, but he took the sun way too low and it burned the earth, scorching it forever. Then Phaethon panicked, yanked the reins up, and the sun went way too high, causing the whirr.